Welcome to Colony TV, the governmental educational channel for the town of Colony. Hello and welcome to the Senior Resources Show. My name is Christine Carey and I'm the Director of the Town at Colony Senior Resources Department. Thank you for joining me today. My guest is Edward Neary, Executive Director of Colony Senior Service Centers. We've invited Ed on today to give us a little overview on the programs and services offered through Colony Senior Service Centers. Thank you for joining me today, Ed. Great to be here. Thank you for having us. Sure. It's great to have you. So much is offered to seniors in the town of Colony between the town department, your department, the clubs. I think sometimes seniors just don't know where to begin in, as far as navigating the senior services provided since there's so much available. Can you start by giving us a little bit of an overview of Colony Senior Service Centers? Uh, yes, and I, I agree with uh, your uh, comments uh, that, that uh, services are rich in the town of Colony and uh, residents are fortunate. but. Uh, as an organization that works with seniors, so are we, and our employees are, are uh, enriched by having the opportunity to work with seniors every day in a lot of different uh, services and programs. Uh, and, and as you know, Colony Seniors was uh, formed uh, 30 years ago, a little bit more than 30 years ago, as a nonprofit corporation to help provide services in the town of Colony. We were created out of uh, the Senior Resources Department, and um, the idea was to create a model to be able to utilize lots of different funding sources that allows us to grow and meet all the services that, that are out there. And the, the types of services that we have are, are the, uh, transportation, which is always one of the most important, and dining programs, senior dining, health and wellness programs, adult day services, umbrella, which is a new program we'll talk more about, and housing, and, and then we've started a number of other programs that, that are additions to those programs. There's certainly an awful lot that that is offered by your organization. Can you tell us a little bit about your board of directors? I know that your board directs policy and, and program development, so if you could talk a little bit about your board structure. Sure. We, we have lots of boards uh, that, are, that are formed for organizations or people who are just uh, community uh, interested uh, volunteers that want to be a part of, uh, of an organization. Uh, in addition to that, we've selected people that match up pretty well with the types of programs and services we offer. So we're fortunate enough to have the executive director of CDTA, for example, on our board who helps us with uh, the transportation issues. We have a number of developers that are on our board that relate to our housing. We have a couple of doctors. We have uh, the, uh, the head of uh, CDPHP, who's a member of the board of directors, as well as uh, as a number of senior volunteers who are close to the needs of the seniors and we try to make sure that we have uh, a good variety and diversity of people who can really talk to the issues and the programs that we have. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really important. They bring a different community perspective uh, to your organization and really help to plan for future programs and services because they see sometimes see things differently than we do. That's see true. See different needs and different unmet needs. That's true. We we sometimes get a little too close to the action, if you were. Absolutely. If it, uh, if it were. And uh, so so these folks bring their experiences to us and let us know what's going on in their world. Yeah, it's important. Well, as our viewers know, my department pretty well, the Senior Resources Department. Uh, I think. Oftentimes there's confusion what the Senior Resources Department does, what Colony Senior mm -hmm. Service Center has done. I mean, in a nutshell, we're a continuum of services, but would you like to speak a little bit about how the two organizations work together? I, I think the easiest way for us to uh, explain it, uh, not only to our employees and certainly uh, to uh, the seniors as well, is that your department, the Senior Resources Department, is the place where people start to find out about services. So it's, uh, it's uh, in addition to the many wonderful programs and services you provide, you can then also then connect them to our organization, which then provides the services. So we look at it as Senior Resources uh, is the referral source. Colony Seniors is the place where a lot of the services are provided, in addition, of course, to those services that you provide uh, directly out of your own department. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's important for our viewers to know that there is that collaboration and communication between the two organizations. So if, you're, if a senior calls our department 
we refer them right over and give right. them the information that they need and vice versa because mm -hmm. folks pick up a pick up the phone and call and that's what we want them to do so if you call the wrong number we'll always guide you right. to where you want and in where some you cases we're so close we can walk them over oh absolutely the hall, right? yes absolutely we're right across the hall yeah. from each other at the Beltrone Living Center uh, so what what would you say how would you sum up Colony's role uh, Colony Senior Service Center's role in the town of Colony uh, I think the, uh, the our role is to uh, try and meet the needs of the senior population and their caregivers in as many ways as uh, as the needs uh, generate. Um, lately, we have in trying to determine what programs to offer, we sort of listen to where the gaps are in service, mm -hmm. and then try to fill the gaps. An example of this was the the latest uh, innovation, which is the driver fitness center where we listen to so the police department uh, uh, talk about older drivers on the road, and then we're able to devise a program where we can actually sit down with older drivers and sort of uh, help them with their uh, needs to keep them s uh, driving safer longer on the roads. So uh, from our standpoint, it's uh, try and meet the needs of the seniors that allow them to live a rich, full life independently at home if that's the uh, the right uh, place for them to be and uh, it and is to listen to whatever their needs are and try to meet those needs um, uh, as the needs pr uh, present themselves and as we both know the needs are are diverse we have different populations yeah. of seniors within the aging cohort so we have our younger seniors that you're trying to plan programming mm -hmm. and, and services for, as well as our frail elderly right. that we're trying to keep uh, in, in their homes and in the town. Brings me to our next question about, we've touched a little bit on some of the programs and services that is that are provided through your organization, but if we could kind of go into a little more detail about some of your key programs, maybe we could start with transportation. Transportation, is, as you well know, is a critical program for seniors. As they age, they tend to um, uh, withdraw from things like uh, driving, certainly being out on the active roads. And Colony, the town of Colony is a busy place. There's, mm -hmm. uh, traffic is pretty heavy in some places. So transportation is a way <clears throat> for our organization to help seniors stay connected to their community. We provide uh, a number of uh, trips for seniors from medical trips to the doctor's office or to the uh, hospital or to visiting people in a nursing home or to socialization events or to, to nutrition, shopping, uh, whatever the need might be. And we try to do that in a balanced way so that a lot of people get the opportunity to use the transportation service as opposed to having it dominated by a few who have appointments every day. It's a challenge. We are always running uh, four or five vans on a daily basis. They run from 8 o'clock in the morning until uh, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, allowing us to finish trips if they run a little bit longer than that. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a challenge. We do that with drivers that are retired from their careers who uh, still want to be involved in a community service. Uh, we pay them a little bit of money, but they do it mostly for the uh, joy of being with the seniors and providing the service. And uh, that is, has just been a, a wonderful program. It allows seniors to connect with a lot of the other programs that we have. Senior dining is a program that brings people to a congregate meal site uh, where they can enjoy the meal and also uh, socialize with some of their neighbors and friends in the community. It brings them to health and wellness programs uh, that are located not only at the Beltrone Living Center, but with a new venture that we have with the Sakati Center. Some of the programs are at the Sakati Center now, which is a great uh, addition to wellness programs, especially for the elderly. Um, housing is a big part of our uh, program with the Beltrone Living Center in Sheehy Manor. We have over 300 apartments in the town of Colony that meet uh, both those um, folks who are income challenged and uh, people who have uh, are just interested in staying in the town and and uh, and paying the uh, rent as uh, as a market rent is gives them a whole wealth of services mm -hmm. in the community. Umbrella is a program that I know we work uh, well with your department on, as well as the Bright Horizons. That is a home maintenance program, or that's how it started. It's now blossomed into so much more than that, and really is the kind of program that uh, other communities should uh, replicate, as did we when we first put the program on in 2008. And then Bright Horizons is a program for caregivers, where we take care of elderly uh, citizens that need a, um, a safe place to go during the day. But really, the primary purpose is to give a little bit of respite and break for the caregivers mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, 
they can do uh, shopping and other errands and, and get a little bit of break from the 24-7 caregiving role that they're involved in. Mm -hmm. Well, you just really gave us a lot of information very concisely mm -hmm. and comprehensively. Folks are going to watch this show and need to digest this information. So at the end of the show, we will provide the phone number and Great. how folks can, can reach your departments. I think it's really important when you talk about the transportation that it really is the underpinning to keeping folks connected to the community. And from my department, and I know you feel strongly about this, that sometimes seniors undervalue the importance of health and wellness and prevention. And all of our programs and all of your programs really speak to that unmet need that many folks have. And as we start to think about aging well in the community, living longer in our homes, I think seniors really need to start to pay more attention to what they're doing today to stay well, stay active, and stay engaged in the community. That is really the key. I've seen it in my 20 years with the town. It's the key to people staying in the community much longer. So are, are spot on as far as right. helping folks to achieve that. You're right. And, and of course, you know, the, the town is a big uh, financial supporter of our organization. Most of that we direct to the transportation and, and really couldn't do what we do in transportation without that uh, kind of support, as well as support that we receive from the Office for the Aging. Um, and it's important because running the types of transportation services for people who are in wheelchairs and walkers or need some assistance uh, is, uh, is expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and, and when we have an elderly person who needs to go to the Bone and Joint Center or to Albany Med, the challenge is are we going to simply bring an elderly person and drop them off at the front door? Uh, and we don't. We provide a, an escort uh, that takes them to their appointment and back out, and that's a service that if they didn't have that and didn't have family local, uh, that these people wouldn't be able to uh, to keep those kinds of appointments. So there's lots of variations. We talk about transportation, it's pretty broadly stated, but there are pieces to it like the escort program that helps people, companions for people who are coming to the Bright Horizons mm -hmm. that need help getting on and off the, uh, the buses, uh, the wheelchair transportation, those kinds of things. And then it's also important, as you know, to work with other transportation services in the community, CDTA through its access program and STAR, our transportation is important. And if we have uh, plenty of resources to go around, what we need to continue to work on as a community in the capital region is the coordination of those resources. And that's an everyday challenge to get people to collaborate and work together. Mm -hmm. But that's the way we get to keep people connected to their community, which is very important. Yeah, it definitely is. You spoke a little bit about funding, and of course, you know, the town of Colony is one of your funders and primarily through the for the transportation program though this year the town is funding meals at this point as well but it takes a lot of money to run an organization that provides as much as you do can you talk a little bit about your funding and and where it comes from and and the support that you get from the community yeah I, it, you're right it, it uh, that's a full-time job to make sure that that uh, that we get the ends to meet, and that's a challenge every day. Uh, we do the, the types of things that every organization, nonprofit, are involved in fundraising uh, and, and um, uh, major gifts and those kinds of things. We like to refer to our events as uh, friend raising events because lots of times the events bring people to the organization. They get to know what it is that we do and then become longtime friends and, and therefore supporters of the organization. So that's a big part of, of uh, raising money to meet uh, daily operating needs. And then needs that we anticipate in the next three to five years. And then when we go into our legacy program, it's for plan giving for people that will ensure that we're here 20 years down the road. That's a big part of it. The biggest part of our funding, aside from the uh, town of Colony, comes from the seniors themselves. And uh, that's an important part because seniors in, under the Older Americans Act uh, are given an opportunity to support the programs in which they're participating. They do it through a confidential, voluntary envelope um, contribution system and and seniors are pretty uh, generous in terms of trying to to pay their own way that's the way that they were brought up that's the way that they were raised they understand that so you will always find somebody will put something in the envelope 
It might only be a quarter from somebody who is a little bit more income challenged, but in most cases they put a, a lot of money. And that helps us to do more programming through their contributions. Um, we also have support that comes to us from our programs, like housing is a program that helps to support the other programs. So the Beltrone Living Center and even Sheehy Manor generate some management and maintenance income that helps to support the programs and services. And then we have contracts with various uh, state agencies. The Office for People with Developmental Disabilities has a contract with us, as does Albany County Office for the Aging, uh, provides uh, contracts for uh, services as well. Mm -hmm. So you piece all of that together. I think the key for us has been to have a diverse funding stream so that if there's any hiccups or changes in any of that, we can then slow down or, or retrench a little bit without shutting down the entire operation. And that's really what we try to do on a daily basis is keep it all going, like juggling a lot of balls in the sky. You know? I know. I, prob I bet you don't have any sleepless nights over by. I don't really. You know why? <laughs> I have a great staff and, uh, you know, it's, they, uh, I have this uh, running uh, joke with one of our employees and I just simply ask, what do I do? And she responds, nothing which is really true. It's just a matter of steering the ship. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, it's a big ship to steer, that's for sure. You've talked so much about partnerships um, with your board of directors, your fundraising, your funders. Um, they're important. Do you want to elaborate on that a little bit, your partnerships in the community? We do. We, the, uh, the most recent one that we were involved in is this uh, newest program is uh, called Senior Fit. is a program with uh, CDPHP <coughs> where they will not only have a membership with uh, programs at the, at the Beltron Living Center, but also at the Sakati Center as well. And it's for people who are in their Medicare Choice Plan. Um, and without getting too specific in terms of the plan, I'll invite them to call us to go over which plans are eligible. But it's the kind of program where we can go out to one of our funders or supporters of the organization and come up with an idea that meets their needs and it meets our needs. And certainly from, from this organization, they have a, a an interest in keeping seniors uh, healthier, longer, out of hospital uh, admissions and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes great sense for us. We're in the same program of trying to keep them healthy. And that's the way we approach funding with our sponsors, whether it's uh, uh, CDPHP or one of the local banks or some of the other smaller organizations that are around. They're all looking to work with an organization who works with a population that they're interested in connecting with. And if we can find a way to make that work, everyone comes to the table. Yeah. Now, one of the great uh, programs that we, or events that we have is the Warmth of Wine. That brings out a lot of people to support mm -hmm. it because it's an effort to raise money for people who have difficulty paying their heating bills in February and March. Uh, and um, organizations are interested in, in participating in that. We raise uh, a lot of money. We give it all to the seniors, either to help them pay those heating bills or to repair the equipment that they have that helps them to heat their homes or insulate their homes. The town certainly participates in the uh, elder uh, program initiative to help uh, meet some of the needs of these folks out there. That in the Northeast is a big problem for our seniors, but it's an easy program to go out and talk to to our supporters and ask them to come and support that. CEFQ and CAPCOM, two of the biggest credit unions in the area, jointly sponsor that mm -hmm. program to, to, to make that a success. So we, we, rather than just simply ask people for a contribution to support an organization, we make it personal and say, this is for the seniors. Here's what we're trying to do. Does that make sense to you? And, and usually in this community, you'll find that these people will come and say, how can I help? Mm -hmm. Well, seniors are, are, I think, the backbone of Colony. They built this great town that mm -hmm. we live in now, and uh, everyone is touched in their lives by whether it was a grandparent or right. a, an elderly neighbor or, um, you know, in a caregiving role. So I think um, folks around, in this area anyway, my experience, can certainly identify with the needs yeah. of our senior community and do want to support our seniors. Right. Um, you know, yesterday at the, uh, was it yesterday? The, uh, Monday, we had the occasion at the Beltron Living Center to celebrate another birthday, another centenarian. centenarian. Uh, that's the fourth one in the building now. Wow. 
And uh, it was just great to have their family there and they were able to celebrate it with the rest of the friends that are in the building. And uh, so as we look out and you know the, the room that we're talking about, the Lakeview room, and then you look out into the pond mm -hmm. and see the fountain that's still bubbling out there. We like to call that the Beltrone Fountain of Youth if we can, people can uh, you know, yeah. continue to live independently into the uh, ripe old age of 100, 102. And coincidentally, that same night, we were saying bon voyage to our oldest resident of the building at 102, who was moving out to uh, uh, Singles Place, I think, out in Arizona someplace. Wow. So maybe our activities got a little bit boring for her. She needed a little more excitement, <laughs> but uh, but it was a it was a great event, and and uh, uh, we we have the pleasure and the opportunity to sit down and spend time with them as part of our job and to mm -hmm. hear them, listen to their stories, and and for our employees, it's just a lucky place to be. It is definitely. Uh. For anyone who works in the aging field, the rewards are the rewarding work that we do every day is really, I won't say it's pay enough, but it's mm -hmm. pretty close. Yep. Uh, I think when we talk about some of these types of um, programs and services and, and events that are going on, uh, aging isn't what aging once was. When I started even in the field 20 years ago, um, when I first started working, if I helped anybody over 90, it was amazing. Mm. I was I was so mm -hmm. pleased that I was helping someone over 90. Now it's like, oh, you're 90? That's right. I got a lot of you I'm, <laughs> that <laughs> I'm right. helping. That's right. But I think, you know, people have to really notice, take notice of how well folks are living longer and living well in the yeah. community. And it's through really the efforts of both our organizations and uh, good prevention and wellness that folks are living well so definitely to be applauded for the work that that's being done volunteers must be an important part of your organization because I I know this limitations of your staff and with the amount of services that you provide you're probably always looking for more volunteers and use volunteers in many capacities do you want to touch on that a bit sure we the uh, the volunteers that our organization probably number 250 volunteers in some shape uh, or form some of them have uh, a little bit of time or a little bit of, uh, of effort that they want to provide others are involved in several different activities and and, and that's the way that fills their day and keeps them going. So we couldn't do what we uh, are able to do without a whole group of volunteers that are out there helping in, in a number of different ways. Um, and the, uh, the challenge for us continues to be to recruit new volunteers. Volunteers come at all ages. We get the, the uh, students from the local schools that want to participate in community service activities to the uh, senior who might be uh, 95 years old and still wants to be actively involved in getting out the newsletter, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, the challenge sometimes with volunteers is how do you manage a force of 250 people? Um, and the way that we simply do that is to provide them with the opportunities and let them figure out how they want to uh, manage their own time in their day. And, and that is a way that a lot of the stuff works out. They're setting tables, they're serving meals, they're helping people on and off the bus, they're spending time in bright horizons just talking to other people. So a volunteer for us is a critical part of, of getting the work done. And we're fortunate to have them from all over the place including, as you know, the, the uh, clubs that uh, you know, uh, work with us uh, every day to make this a great place to, for people to live and grow old. Are there volunteer opportunities for maybe moms who are home during the day and their children are in school and are looking to fill a few hours, possibly before the kids come home from school, or for our baby boomers who are you know, young retirees and maybe aren't ready yet for you know, some of our programs and services, sure. but have a little time to give back. Sure, yeah, they, they uh, certainly the, the uh, programs like uh, transportation, we use a lot of uh, uh, people, drivers, uh, our volunteers in some cases for the escort program. Uh, the moms that have a little bit of time, sometimes they'll come in and spend time in the Bright Horizons program because the, f the uh, timing is flexible. They can come and go as they need to. And, um, uh, you know, it, uh, administrative tasks are always available in the program. So I, I think having a number of different activities and letting them pick and choose which ones work uh, allow uh, our, our ability to be able to use a lot of different volunteers at a lot of different ages.
ages. We love working with the, the local churches and the schools because we know that these students have uh, community service activities that they need to participate in. And, you know, for the, the uh, senior citizens, it's nothing like having a bunch of joyful kids coming over. Maybe they're coming over to have a little fun themselves, but the reaction that we see with the uh, seniors over there is just a terrific uh, opportunity for us. Yeah, absolutely. Bringing the generations together is always a good thing. And if the young kids will listen, the seniors have a lot to tell them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, gee, we've covered a lot of information today, certainly in this, in this segment. We're running towards the end of our show, but I, um, we've given an overview. I was hoping that you could maybe provide us with some contact information, some phone calls, phone numbers that folks can call if they um, want to get in touch with any of your, your, your directors of any of your programs. So if you could provide that sure. to us. Uh, our administrative offices are located at the Beltron Living Center on at Six Winter Circle. Uh, we have other locations throughout the community and um, uh, the uh, telephone number to, the, to our offices is 459-2857. That'll bring you to the receptionist who will then redirect you to whatever department you're looking for. As you know, they can also reach your office and be directed to, redirected to us. Uh, in addition to that, our website is www.colonyseniors.org. Uh, I brought some information here. The Senior Connections newsletter um, is a place where people can keep track of what's going on in the organization in the various programs. Our annual report does the same thing in terms of that. And uh, I certainly would invite those uh, folks who are looking for information to to look at the website that has just a lot of information that uh, has been um, uh, recently updated in the past uh, six months. In addition to that, we've gone high tech with social media, with Facebook. I was going to ask you about uh, that. And uh, that, that's because we've been smart enough to go out and hire uh, younger people than me who understand this stuff and, uh, and stay connected to it. And, and they, uh, they're certainly bringing us into the, the uh, 21st century. now. Uh, there's been a suggestion that I start tweeting, and um, you know, other than whistling, I'm not sure what that <laughs> means exactly, but we'll get somebody to do that as well. But we do have to remember that contact for us is about uh, a larger generation than just the seniors. Right. It's their adult children who are caring for them, mm -hmm. their grandchildren, great stories from grandkids who are able to access certain programs through Skype, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which uh, uh, when I uh, first started, uh, you know, Rotary was the uh, telephone was the way of communication. Now Date it's a, you can you know, communicate all in any different way that you'd like. Yeah. But uh, some of us would like to walk in and to be able to shake hands and see who we're talking yeah. to. Others find the information off the web is an easy way to mm -hmm. find out what's going on. So we try to hit all of those areas mm -hmm. and keep the information current. Well, thank you very much. We, we will post the information, the contact information at the end of the show so folks can contact you. I think we could have talked another hour going into more detail about the umbrella program yep. and so many other the services that you provide and are available in the town of Colony. But I think we wet the whistle a little yep. bit and folks can pick up the phone and call. Um, it's a starting point, just like right. you said in the beginning, you know, we're the kind of the place to start for services in the town. And we have the center um, that provides so many of the other services that the town do doesn't provide. But it's, it's just great to get this information out there. And I hope our viewers, you know, will take advantage of this good information. Great. So thank you for joining us. Thank you today. for having us. We appreciate the opportunity. Sure, you're welcome. And thank you for joining me today on the Senior Resources Show. I'll see you next time. <music>